Welcome back to Strong's Garage. Hey, I'm Matt, Jim here. Today we're gonna work on an engine. Oh yeah, more exciting Ford content. Yeah, seems to be the way. We've been uh, diligently working in the shop. We've moved the entire shop. Yeah, yeah, completely. And uh, its head. you'll see that in a little bit. If you're used to how it used to look, it's different. Yeah, but if you've never seen it before, it'll look the same. That's right. So uh, just want to take a minute to thank everybody for watching and liking and subscribing still and commenting. And oh yeah, it's wonderful. All the patrons still patroning. We've been putting a few things up on Patreon uh, every month. Yeah, so if you want to check that out, you're more than welcome to. But uh, today we, we rebuilt a 1932 Ford uh, four-cylinder, a B model as it's known. Yeah, and uh, we figured we'd run it in. Oh yeah, get it fired up for the first time in however many years. Yeah. It's nice, neat when you take uh, <coughs> parts and fix them and put them into a thing and then make it do something. Oh yeah, yeah, it turned out beautifully. It sure did. We did, uh, we did everything here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, neat. They're my favorite engine. But uh, I guess, is there anything else? I think that's... Uh... Without further ado, let's go see how it sounds. There, let's go to the yeah. top here. I don't know, see how it's... Without further ado, let's go... Get it running. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the B model for the gym just finished rebuilding. Yeah, we're excited. Run it in. Hear uh, how this thing sounds. We did uh, pretty much everything to this. This is a uh, 1932 Ford four cylinder. It's going in a 1929 Model A. A local fellow had us do it. He wants to do some touring, so he decided on a B model, which has a counterbalanced crankshaft and slightly larger main journals and a little better oil prep, oiling, little better oiling system. And uh, we had it balanced, uh, flywheel balanced, and it's 40 over, you know, we went through the whole oh, thing. Oh yeah, high compression head. Oh yeah, yeah, five and a half to one head. We rebuilt a B model carburetor and put it on. So it's, the key is, uh, oh. Oh, it's got the best of, uh, well, it's kind of a hybrid of model A and B. It's got A cell water pump, a intake and exhaust because going into an A and mm -hmm. the A bell housing, which is uh, yeah, the modified yeah. 32 Ford oil pan. But uh, the task at hand now that it's done is to run it in. So we're going to set it up in this frame like a makeshift run stand. We had always planned to build a run stand, we just haven't done it yet. Yeah, not yet. You might notice a bit of difference in the decorating too. We did a lot of stuff around the shop here. We recommissioned this old uh, service station cabinet here and just kind of upped our image a bit. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leveled up. Anyway, we'll bring it in, we'll get it into the frame, hook up a radiator and a few other things and we'll run her in. Yeah, yeah. Exciting. One more. There you go. Oh, down a little bit. Oh no, maybe up. up a bit. Perfect. There, starters in play. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Put that exhaust on to get that Model A tone. Oh, yeah. That's wonderful. Oh, wait. Pitter patter. Thumb. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jim's got a little IV bag set up here. Oh, yeah. Gas. Little drip feed system. Gravity. Precisely the same height as a stock Model A fuel tank. Yes. Similar fuel pressures. Yeah, fuel pressures here. Right. Get our fuel hose on. 
important. Get yeah. fuel from here to there. The B model carburetor is bigger and it also has a fuel inlet in a different spot because fuel on the 32 Fords comes from the back of the car so it needs a fuel pump. So Ford had a fuel pump on it. This Model A won't use the fuel pump. So we'll just have to make a new fuel line from the tank coming back to this instead of the side of the carb like in a Model A. But I'll easily overcome. So these are my favorite Ford engines of all time, these four cylinders. Um, they're very easy to put in a Model A Ford. All you have to do is modify, like we said, the oil pan and the, uh, the front motor mount. The timing covers are almost identical. And you have to uh, put a Model A clutch cover on it to put it in a Model A frame. Because the 32, the oil pan is half of this clutch cover, which is a little bit different. But uh, yeah, they fit in there pretty good. And to the uh, untrained eye, almost undetectable. Oh, yeah. Alright, well, we've got it all positioned into place. Jim uh, tested the gas, we got no leaks. Uh, what else we got? We got the rad on, eh? Yeah, radiators on, starters in, water pipes, starter. Pretty much ready to uh, go. We're gonna fill her up with oil now. Brand new motor, five quarts. Because the uh, drip pan is empty, so we'll just go ahead and add some oil here. All right. So our next step here is uh, Matt's got oil in it. Some real good, high quality straight 30 weight, and. Uh, so we're going to pull the plugs out and spin it over with the starter and uh, try and get some oil out here. Make sure that the pump's lifting and because these are uh, pressured mains so we'll make sure we're getting oil to the uh, to the mains here. So remove these four spark plugs. Oh yeah, so we'll just uh, remove these spark plugs. You might notice that there's two different colors and uh, they came from identical boxes but we're provided with uh, some of the Raven coating on them and some of the uh, cadmium or whatever uh, the silver color is called. But uh, so we just arrange them in kind of a aesthetic fashion here with the silver ones in the middle. And uh, the oil pump itself fully rebuild, rebuilt and uh, B model specific. So uh, if you're getting into this kind of stuff you have to uh, be aware there's probably five different oil pumps that a Model A had and the B model is different. So different shaft sizes, we had to end up, the rebuild kits are all for A's, so we had to machine down the shaft and uh, you had to allow adequate flow for this uh, the pressure main oiled uh, B model. So we've got our plugs out, I'll take this oil plug out and then we'll be able to see if the uh, starter will spin it. Another uh, notable note here is that uh, on these uh, A's and B's the oil pumps intended to float and there's a spring on the bottom of it and a lot of people jam a bolt in here to tighten it up so the oil pump doesn't fall off or anything like that but that's a, uh, a no-no it needs to be allowed to move a bit so uh, this one just has the uh, proper little pipe threaded uh, plug in there it'll go back in there so oh, we'll hook up our battery and see what uh, we can do okay ready yep. oh, the starter isn't very good okay, it's ringy ringy oh here comes your oil Oh really? Yep. Go ahead. There it is. Oh, that works perfectly. Good. Well, you may have noticed that uh, even with no compression, this poor old starter would barely turn this uh, motor over. And so with this uh, slightly upgraded head or really anything, <coughs> it's going to be trouble. So <coughs> we talked to the uh, customer and he said, uh, go ahead, rebuild it. Been having trouble with it for a bit. So if you come take a look here, you can see... Uh, We've definitely got issues with this back bushing here. And so as it pushes away and wears, it, uh, yeah, it should be nice and tight. And then that changes all your distances and your, uh, inside your starter. So yeah, we'll pull it all apart, refresh it. This, yeah, so here's the starter out of the car. A neat little fuse on it here, your main power, but. Yeah, our problem here is probably these uh, bushings inside. So we'll peel her apart, take a peek, pop this open, take a look at the brushes. See how. Oh, yeah, brushes look like they're getting a little short. Commutator looks pretty shiny, so hopefully it shouldn't be too bad of a, uh, a rebuild here.
Okay, we've got it all apart. We've got uh, our armature here, which uh, commutator bars look all right. We'll clean it up. Test it on this growler. The brushes are uh, fairly worn and not super even, so we'll probably change them out. So you can see there, this one's probably about well, half the length it originally was. And uh, yeah, this tail bushing is in actually quite good shape, so we may keep that in there. And uh, as most of the loads on this front one here, and we've got a bit of a step in the shaft here, so we'll see how good uh, that comes out here. The, definitely the bushing is quite worn in the uh, in the snout section here, so we'll change that out. And yeah, we should have a very good starter. Oh, melting these things out. There. Perfect. There you go. A little more for good measure. There. Perfect. All right, test our armature here on this old Carter Growler. So we've got a couple checks here. We've got these uh, sort of a continuity tester here. So we'll just make sure that we've got uh, no continuity from the shaft itself to these uh, commutator bars, continuity kind of between these, nothing in between but on the bars themselves, so that looks good. And then uh, we turn it on and we use a thin piece of steel and see, uh, you'll know if it growls or not. Let's get there. Good. Yeah, I know if they're poor, this whole thing will start shaking. It creates like a magnetic field of sorts. And uh, but no, this one should be good to go. All right, get this bushing out of here. Put a new one in. Get the driver. Alright, the starter switch all cleaned up, ready to go on here, so we'll just put it all together, this little fuse block and everything. Perfect, all together, so we'll test it before we put it in the car. Oh yeah, sounds like it's got lots of jam, so we'll put it in and see how it is. We've got our starter installed, we try it out here. Oh, well, it's much better. Tighten up these plugs. Put our spark back on and see if it starts. First start ever, hey? Eh? Yeah, it's exciting. It is exciting. Little minor setback with the starter, but that's all for the better, really. Oh, it'll be a much better car for us.
Well, the first start was, uh, you know, growing pains, but uh, it had a little chuff to it and it had a bit of a miss, so we uh, put new points in it, retimed it, uh, set the float a little bit different, just a bunch of little small things. Anyways, what do you think, Jim? Oh, yeah, we'll give her a little try a roo here. See how she starts now. Much better. Quiet. Take you many, many hours and miles of trouble free motoring. Once you get it in the car, though, we'll have to do a road test. And, but the motor's broke in now. There you have it, the venerable four cylinder. Yeah, with that wonderful exhaust rhythm that yeah, yeah. Henry was so famous for. Oh, yeah, those are a nice engine. Uh, like, if you're restoring a Model A to Concorde specs, well, then I would do a, a Model A engine correct to whatever month of between 19, late 27 and early 31 that your car is. But uh, for a car like this, be cool. Oh, for someone you want to drive a lot? Yeah, no, there is no better uh, platform. Yeah, the touring engine for sure. And, and I figured while we're on the Fords, we might as well read another joke from the book, the Ford joke book. Yeah. yeah. Another joke from the book. Yeah, a yeah, good little lighten things up a bit. All right, some levity to the situation, eh? Okay, here's a nice little ditty for us here. Ah. A little tin, a little wire, and a piece of board. Wire them together and you have a Ford. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> How about this one? <coughs> a Ford car, which was used as a jitney for carrying passengers from a certain city to another city, mm -hmm. had a sign hanging on it which read 25 cents. Oh, yeah. A farmer coming along, stopped, reading the sign, exclaimed, Why, heck, that suits me just fine, I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe one more. One more, yeah. Oh, this is our slogan. This is where it came from, right here. Yeah. Before we knew this. Yes. Uh, a sign in a country town reads as follows. Automobiles repaired and Fords fixed. Oh, what a corker. <laughs> anyway, thanks everybody for watching. We're working on uh, lots of stuff, so we're going to get back to it. Catch you on the next one.